right, everybody, we are back with a brand new Cabral concept. Can't wait to kick off today's show. You may have been hearing about this. You may have seen this across social media and in the news, but the CDC's Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry, also known as the ATSDR, published its priority list of hazardous substances, which actually ranks toxicity based on their potential for human harm, and it's called the national priorities list on those websites. So what I wanted to bring you today was four of the most toxic heavy metals that you can actually look at, test for, and I'm going to share with you the different sources where people are picking this up, plus, plus the potential effects as well. So let's dive right into the show, and I want to break them down for you. It's only four, but these four are extremely important, and I'm going to share the foods and other possible contaminations that you or your family may be exposed to. So the number one on the list is arsenic, believe it or not. Arsenic, what is it? Well, all of these are coming from the environment. They are naturally occurring. The problem is, is that they are often produced at higher levels depending on the specific toxicity, such as power plants, industrial waste, et cetera, and we'll break that down for you as well. So arsenic, here are the possible toxic side effects, again, listed by the CDC, and this is a known carcinogen. So I want you to know, every time you see the word carcinogenic, or carcinogen, just know that that ingredient, usually of course artificial, or a toxic heavy metal, or even an artificial color or something, can actually cause cancer. Now, is it dose dependent? Yes. Now they look at certain high dosages, but what they don't ever look at is, what happens when you've been exposed to arsenic for 40 years of your life, right? Little by little by little, and it builds up in your system. Well that could potentially cause cancer as well. Besides that, it can cause skin rashes, affect the skin overall itself. If it was uh, absorbed through the skin, uh, transdermally, it can affect the lungs, especially if you were to breathe it in. It affects your liver because your liver is trying to detox it as well, creating inflammation, and it can disrupt your immune system. So also remember that anytime your immune system is focused over here, trying to get rid of that heavy metal or, or pesticide or environmental toxin, it may not be going after cancer cells as well. That's part of the issue as well. So these things cause inflammation, which could lead to cancer, but they also can imbalance the immune system. All right, what's the most common exposure to arsenic? Like where would you actually pick arsenic up? Mainly groundwater. So here's the issue. You've got all this groundwater, but where is it running to? Well, could be given to livestock, right? could also be running through crops. And that is one of the biggest contaminators of rice. So it's not really like a surprise. If you were to grow rice all on its own and you were to use clean water, highly unlikely that you're gonna get these really high levels of arsenic. But when you're running, who knows where this water is coming from, right? Industrial waste-based water through rice-based fields and is being absorbed into the rice that is why rice is a oftentimes high arsenic-based food. Now, do I think you should never eat rice? No, not at all. My family and I eat rice. What you want to look for are brands that test for arsenic, that are low in arsenic. So I've listed a few brands before. Lotus is one brand, and Lindbergh or Lundberg is another. So there's multiple brands out there. Those aren't the only ones, right? But these are brands that you can start to check out, and then others. Just say, hey, you know, you've got um, your favorite rice brand. Just send an email to them. Hey, do you guys uh, test for arsenic? Uh, yes, we do. Here's actually our levels. Great. That's under, because remember, there's going to be small amounts of arsenic. It lives in the environment. So you're not looking for it to be 0, 0.000, right, as you test out to the thousandth point. Uh, but what you want to look at is that it's far below acceptable levels, right? We don't want just generally regarded as safe. That's considered grass. We want far below that. All right. Number two. Oh, and the last one for arsenic is pressure treated wood. So, you know, if you bring in a lot of times um, uh, like composite wood or things like that in your home, 
could contain arsenic. Do I think that there's going to be a lot of exposure from that? Probably not unless you're breaking it up, but always possible, right? Always possible. There's actually a whole lot of other toxins uh, in uh, composite-based wood and, and fake wood, but uh, that's a show for another day. All right, number two is lead. This one, you might have already guessed. Lead, we know, is a serious heavy metal, right? We know that. Why? Because it can cause neurological issues. So pregnant women and small babies, toddlers are tested sometimes for lead, but we're supposed to make sure that our homes are lead free because we don't want our children or a pregnant woman to be exposed to lead. Why? Because it is neurotoxic and it can affect the kidneys, the blood, and the nervous system. So when the body's exposed to higher levels of lead, it literally begins to shut down. I worked with a client. I wrote about this in the rain barrel effect. Uh, they were all set to go begin to go into cancer treatment, literally all set to begin cancer treatment. And I just said, I don't know. Like, I don't see enough to say that this is definitely cancer. This could be uh, six other things. I said, just humor me for two weeks and run these different labs. Turns out, it was lead poisoning. Did I expect it to be lead? No. I just, I had a feeling it was more, it could be something else because it was mimicking something else. And, and there we have it. Now it took 12 to 16 weeks to get this out of the client system, but they made a dramatic turnaround over that next three to six months. So pretty impressive uh, for the client. Again, all my job is this. How do we find out what the deficiencies are and the toxicities are? Implement the protocols in order to rebalance the body, and the body innately knows how to heal itself. All right, what are the most common sources? I chatted about this before, but it's old paint. You have, if you have a house, I believe it's before like 1970 or so, uh, you want to be careful. You want to just test it for lead paint. And believe it or not, it is oftentimes all of the molding around the windows or molding on uh, the crown molding up on the ceiling. The walls have probably been painted over multiple times or whatever it might be, but it's the molding under three or four different layers that is oftentimes the lead paint. So, uh, they now make sealants to seal the lead paint. They make things to strip it, or of course, you can rip it out. You have to be careful ripping it out because that dust goes in the air. So of course, good ear filters, ventilators for the people working there, etc. All right, old paint, water pipes, soil, and batteries are your most common exposures. Batteries would literally need to start to come apart. That's you know part of it. Or if you work with batteries, like we work with, again, like everybody, hundreds of thousands of people in our practice. So we've seen it all. We've seen it actually, battery exposure, which is super rare, right, in the general public to be exposed to that. Yes, it is in the soil. Just more rare that you're going to get it from the soil, that's for sure. Um, but, but possible. There's no doubt about it. Again, there's minuscule amounts of lead in your veggies and in your fruit. And like, it, there just are, because they grow in the soil, right? So it's like, it's you'll have tiny amounts that you would get in nature. We're worried about the larger amounts. And then water pipes, old lead pipes, right? Before they got uh, transitioned over to PVC and, uh, and, and just bendable uh, pipes, or maybe even copper, they're lead. And that's for most municipalities, they're being kind of changed out, uh, flexible piping typically in the home, and then underground, it's usually like some type of PVC, et cetera, which again, has different uh, PVCs, a, a toxin as well, but lead, I mean, that's next level, right? As these things start to corrode, that's what happened. And guess what? The person that is written about in the rain barrel effect worked in the water departments and around old pipes. I didn't know that, but once we started to talk more about that, they were literally in groundwater many of the days. Oh, they're exposed to lead right? You have a cut on your foot, that lead's getting right in. All right. So that's number two. Number three is this, mercury. You've heard of mercury before. You might even know where some of the exposure is, but did you know that it's also a neuro, uh, neurotoxin? When I say neurotoxin, I always mean that it affects the nervous system. So Parkinson's disease, tremors, um, headaches, muscle cramps, lethargy, fatigue, any, anything that affects the nervous system, right, is a neurotoxin. All right. It can affect the brain, the kidneys, and fetal development. So lead affects fetal development. Lead affects kidneys. Uh, lead is a neurotoxin, and they all affect the brain. That's for sure. Uh, but mercury specifically, why? It can, it can fairly easily cross the blood-brain barrier. And because of that, it can end up in the brain. And then that can then end up creating more inflammation, which could then lead to plaque buildup, et cetera. So could affect Alzheimer's could affect uh, Parkinson's, dementia, et cetera. Not ideal. Where's this mercury coming from? Those silver fillings that you see in their mouth that they call silver? Not really silver. 
There is uh, all sorts of different metals, and one of those is mercury. Mercury we know is toxic. We absolutely know is toxic. So does the dental industry. They're unwilling to say that because of think of the liability from all the metal fillings being put in someone's mouth. But we know that mercury is poisonous and deadly. So now we seal it in a tooth and we say, oh, it's all good. Well, what happens, like me, again, I wrote this in the rain barrel effect, where your mercury fillings or silver fillings start to upend and turn up over years and decades. I had mine for like 20 years. And you're starting to get microscop microscopic amounts in every time you chew, uh, in your mouth, which then goes in your capillaries, in your blood, affects your heart, everything uh, over time. So that is the, that's one of the biggest ones. Uh, the second one is, especially in older generations, I'll just say shots, there would be mercury in there. And uh, for various reasons, we'll just keep it at that because I will get completely banned uh, on YouTube and other players for talking specifically about this, even though it's literally scientifically validated. Again, I'm not giving a pro or con. I'm just saying this is what it is. Uh, so that's that. Number three is fish. So Although I'm an advocate of some fish in your diet because the omega-3s can be great. It's a cleaner source of protein. What, what is uh, some of the larger fish? Well, I'm going to link it up here today. So if you go to stephencabral.com slash 3357, obviously all of these podcasts are free. We're going to link up highest and lowest omega-3 fish. That's an important one to look at because you probably know that tuna, maybe you know that tuna is high in mercury. I didn't. I ate it all through college. So literally Monday through, call it Thursday, and probably Sunday night as well, I would go to the gym and I'd go get a regular meal, but I was trying to put on muscle like a lot of you know people do in college. And I would, it was cheap, right? So I would microwave a bag of rice because I thought it was totally fine to microwave rice, right? In a, in a plastic bag for a minute, rice, that totally fine, right? Being sarcastic, obviously. Then I would put some really cheap olive oil on it. Who knows what was even in that bottle? And then I would add tuna on top. Well, on the outside, you're like, oh, this is a f okay, fairly healthy meal for a college student. Cost me like 50 cents for the tuna, maybe 25 cents or so for that olive oil. I don't know, and maybe 25 cents for the rice. So for a dollar, I basically had a meal. And like when you're in college and you have no money, like that's pretty great. Well, I went to see eventually a naturopathic doctor. Um, and guess what? I was wildly high in mercury. For me, the exposure was multiple things, but for sure it was eating tuna every single night. Swordfish is another one. Bluefish, a lot of the larger fish are high in mercury. All right. And the last one is industrial admissions that can bring mercury up into the air. It's in the clouds. It rains down. It goes in our oceans. Of course, that's where some of the fish get it. Uh, and then it can go into the soil as well. All right. The last one today is called cadmium. You may or may not have heard of cadmium. Uh, maybe you heard about it with batteries. That's kind of like talked about a lot of the electric vehicles, the EVs, right? What do they need? What's one of the biggest things they need? Lithium, okay. But cadmium is a big thing that they need for batteries. Okay. So here's what I wanted to share with you. Um, and there are others as well on this list, but this is a really important one. Damages the kidneys. So it literally causes inflammation in the tubules of the kidneys. Not good, right? Not good since one out of eight, one out of 10 people end up with uh, chronic kidney disease. So this is important to look at. And again, they never test for heavy metals. It can be an issue for the lungs, the bones, and is carcinogenic, which means it can lead to cancer. So common sources, cigarettes. Right, So it's in and can be in cigarettes. So people literally smoking cadmium, a heavy metal, uh, is just part of the tobacco and, and the filters. Industrial waste, well, that industrial waste leads to runoff, which contaminates the water. And it can also contaminate the food. We spoke about one of those earlier as rice. But it can affect other things. There's cad there can be cadmium and bromine and other things in wheat bread and bread in general, right? So that's an important one to look at. And then also I spoke about that with batteries. Uh, and, you know, potentially just in the uh, air itself with pollution. So those are four that I like to look at. There are a few others, believe it or not. There's a certain form of chromium, not the chromium that you would get in your uh, vitamins and minerals, which is chromium picolinate, but a different form. And that form is, I mean, absolutely deadly. And that is something that I think is, is really, you know, worth looking into because, 
almost no one is testing for these, right? So these are, these are heavy metals that's called uh, hexavalent chromium, uh, which like I said, is just a completely different form and it's highly toxic and carcinogenic, which means it can lead to cancer. Uh, so it can be inhaled, it can be inhaled uh, through the mouth, in the nose, and, and that can lead to sinus cancers, lung cancer, et cetera. So pretty deadly, pretty bad. I don't think the exposure to that is as wild, but it is a toxic one. I gave you the four that you're most likely to be exposed to. And also uh, those four are very easy to test for. You can run this lab literally with a hair sample. Why a hair sample? Because when it's absorbed into your body through your skin, through food, through breathing it in, your body says, I need to get rid of this and it can excrete it and it excretes it and some of it shows up in your hair. So if you have a high level of in your hair, by the way, they use this for FBI testing. They use this in NASA-based studies. They use this uh, all over PubMed. So here, mineral anest uh, mineral analysis testing is actually one of the best ways to look for heavy metals, literally one of the least invasive best ways to look for it. And so that's how we look for these specifically. Uh, if you've never heard about that test before, you can always look it up. It's called the minerals and metals test. It's at stephencabal.com slash labs. Uh, you'll learn about the minerals and metals test there, other labs as well. Again, you don't have to run these labs through us, but you should know they're available. And that's important because it took me years to even know that these labs were available beyond just basic blood work, because basic blood work is definitely not testing for these heavy metals. And you want to see what your body is being exposed to and excreting as well. So hopefully today's show was helpful. If I can answer any questions, I'd be happy to do so. And of course, do a follow-up show as well. Today's show notes and some additional shows like on Mercury, head on over to stephencabral.com slash 3357. Take care, everybody. I'll talk with you soon. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.